Okay, in this video we're going to be talking about finding integrals by doing u substitution, um, which is actually kind of a basic idea. So the idea is that uh, we're going to try to solve an easier problem. So what happens is uh, most of the integrals that you are given initially, and actually for a very long time, um, they must be the derivative of something that you recognize. And uh, we kind of take that idea and run with it. So for example, we know that the integral of cosine of x dx is equal to sine of x plus c, because if we take the derivative of sine of x, we get cosine of x. Um, so a lot of problems actually look similar to this, but with a little difference. So if, for example, we had the integral of cosine of 5x dx, I look at that and I say that's basically the same problem, um, and I can make it the same problem if I made some substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that u is equal to 5x. And if I do that, I'm going to try to rewrite the entire thing in terms of u, which means that dx that's at the end of the integral has to be subbed for. So if u is equal to 5x, then that means that du would be 5dx. And if that's the case, then dx, the thing I'm going to substitute for, is 1 fifth du. And now I have enough to completely rewrite the integral, so that's what I'm going to do. So I rewrite it as the cosine, integral of the cosine of 5x becomes u, and then dx becomes... 1 fifth du. And now what I'll do is I'm going to rewrite this so it looks even more similar. So I'm pulling out the 1 fifth constant multiples can be factored out. So I get 1 fifth the integral of cosine of u du. So this I know is definitely going to be 1 fifth um, sine of u and then plus c. And then uh, in the first step I said that u is equal to 5x. So we can go back and say 1 fifth sine of 5x plus c. So this will happen over and over again. So let's take a look at another example. So say we have the integral of x times cosine of 3x squared dx. Okay, so we got to make a choice. And as I said in the previous one, uh, you almost always just go with whatever the argument of the trig function is. So I'm going to try u is equal to 3x squared. And now what we do is we figure out du and see if we can match it up. So um, if this is the case, then du should be 6x dx. And if we look at the original, we don't have a 6, but we do have an x and a dx, which means that x dx can be replaced with 1 6 du. Um, and now we have enough to, to just do our substitution, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. So the integral becomes the integral of cosine of u, that's the whole idea, and then x dx in combination are being replaced by 1 6 du. And now we can take out the 1 6 to make it look even more similar. So we have this, and then we integrate, and we get 1 6 the sine of u, and then plus c. And then we substitute back in. So we get 1 6 sine of um, u is equal to 3x squared, and then plus c is a big deal when you do integrals. All right, let's take a look at one more of this type. So say we want to integrate um, cosine of sine of x times cosine of x dx. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it and say that u is equal to sine of x because that's the argument of cosine of x. So when you're looking at these, it's kind of, if you have a lot of experience with the chain rule, um, u is often the most nested function. So it's, it's the function currently nested inside of cosine of x. Um, so u is sine of x, that makes du the derivative of sine of x, so cosine of x, and then dx. Um, if I look, I actually have a cosine of x dx, so I can actually just substitute for that. So let's rewrite our integral. So this one actually looked like the scariest one to begin with, but instead this cosine of x dx is perfectly du, so this is actually the shortest one. If I integrate this, I get sine of u, and then if I replace it, I get sine of sine of x, so that's a weird function, and then plus c. All right. Um, so let's do uh, a couple more just to see how this works. So we know that the integral of x cubed dx is 1 fourth x to the fourth plus c. So we can use that fact to integrate a lot of things. Um, for example, if we had the integral of cosine cubed of x times sine of x dx. So we're going to make our substitution. Um, I'm going to say that u is equal to cosine of x, which will make du equals sine of x, well, negative sine of x, because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, negative sine of x dx. So I have a sine of x dx, but I don't have a negative, so I'm actually going to solve for sine of x dx, 
and get sine of x dx is just negative du. And now I can make all my substitutions. So um, I'm going to have the integral of u cubed, and then sine of x dx is going to be replaced by negative du. So I can take out that negative and get the integral of u cubed du, which is negative, and then plus 1 times the reciprocal, so 1 fourth, and then u to the fourth plus c, and then u was equal to cosine. So it's going to be cosine to the fourth of x, and then plus c. All right, let's take a look at another one that looks like this. So once you get the hang of it, um, integrals all start kind of looking the same. So say we want to integrate um, x squared times a quantity 5x cubed minus 4 cubed. Um, so I'm going to let u equal 5x cubed minus 4, which means that du is 15x squared dx. And in the problem, I have an x squared and I have a dx, but I don't have a 15. So I'm going to solve this for x squared dx and say that that's equal to 1 15th du. And now I can make all my substitutions. So I get the integral of u cubed, and then x squared dx is being replaced by 1 15th du. And then that's 1 15th times the integral of u cubed, which is 1 15th times, reverse the power rule, so it's 1 fourth u to the fourth plus c, and then substitute back. So you can see both of these problems are basically the same problem. Um, they just are a little different initially because we haven't done our u substitution yet. So I want to do two more that are, again, they're not that bad once you get the hang of it. So let's start with the premise that the integral of radical x dx, radicals are really annoying to integrate, so usually you change them right away to rational exponents. So it's the integral of radical x dx is the integral of x to the 1 half dx. And if you reverse the power rule, that's plus 1 times the reciprocal. It'll be 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, so this one does not obviously look like that at all. Um, we have the integral of radical 5 minus radical x all over radical x dx. So this looks like it's going to be messy, but I'm just going to go ahead and say that u is equal to 5 minus radical x, which is kind of the most nested function. Um, and if that's the case, then du is going to be negative 1 half x to the negative 1 half, and then dx. Um, so if you look... We can rewrite this, so x to the negative 1 half is 1 over radical x, so I see that in the problem, and dx is obviously there, and that's all that's in the original problem, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dx over radical x must be equal to negative 2 du, and now I can make all my substitutions. So this integral becomes just radical u times negative 2 du, and if we integrate that, um, we get negative 2, and then the integral of u to the 1 half, so it's negative 2 times 2 thirds is negative 4 thirds, and then u to the 3 halves, and then plus c. And now we substitute back in our 5 minus radical x for u. So negative 4 thirds, 5 minus radical x to the 3 halves, and then plus c. Okay, let's take a look at another one. So say we have radical tan of x over cosine squared of x dx. So these all look more challenging but they're all going to go back to just the integral of radical u du, basically, if we do this correctly. So I'm going to pick u is equal to tangent of x, which makes du equal to secant squared of x dx. Um, and if you look at the original problem, we do have that, but it doesn't look like that. It's just you have to remember that secant is 1 over cosine, so we can say that du is actually dx over cosine squared. Compare that to the original, that's all that we have in the problem, so we can totally rewrite our integral. So we get just that. Um, and so this, if you rewrite it as the integral of u to the 1 half du, and then if you reverse the power rule, it's 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c, and then if you make your substitution, we get 2 thirds, and then tangent of x to the 3 halves plus c, and that's all there is to it. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.